Good morning, everyone. Today is Thursday, January the 3rd, and this is Anne-Marie doing the SPY outlook for the day. Um, we can see that we came right into R3 and uh, stopped just shy of it, uh, that number being somewhere around 146.30ish or so. Uh, depending on which pivot you use, the number comes in just a little bit tighter. Um, and so that's where we are. We're sitting right at the top of the pivot. Yesterday, I said something to the effect of, listen, we should see selling here. But if we don't, we're going to head into the next pivot. And uh, I, I got an interesting response that said, oh, so if we don't go down, then we're going to go up. Wow, that's insightful. And for the average person that just does not understand price action at specific levels, a lot of times that does seem, well, wait a second, you know, of course if it doesn't go down, it's going to go up. Well, that's not exactly true. But here's what you need to do when you watch a price coming into a target. That comment made me very, um, very keen on expressing this particular note to the general junior trader. When something approaches a target, it's going to do something if it's a relevant target. What it does at the target should help you establish your next set of moves in the market. For instance, for me, coming into that target, the first thing I'm going to do is take some profit. But I'm not going to get out of the trade until it breaks frontline support. If it fails to break frontline support, I know that buyers are coming in there to support the price at that level. If that's the case, I'm going to look for a higher high than I just previously experienced, and I'm going to sit in the trade. You've got to be a thinker in terms of what to do with the charts. I also got another email. I get a lot of emails from folks, which I greatly appreciate. I read all of them, even though I don't get back to some of you um, like I probably should. I do read all of them, and I do get of quite a volume of them. But I did have one person just say to me the other day, you know what, um, I'm just not smart enough to do this business. And I've got to tell you, this business is for someone who needs to think, but you do not have to be smart, per se. What you do have to be is very regimented and very rigored in your approach, and you have to be skilled. And being skilled doesn't always mean being smart. It just means being skilled. And so if you feel intimidated by the markets because, hey, I'm not smart enough or whatever, that's got nothing to do with it. Smarts has nothing to do with being good at this game. But being observant and being patient <coughs> and being willing to develop a skill that involves attention-based work, that means that you can absolutely get whatever it is that you want out of this business. A lot of us get frustrated, and it's because we don't give skill building enough of a chance. All right, there's my diatribe. Now, let's move into the course of action on the day. What is it that we need to see happen? Now, um, I normally stop trading at about 2.30. And so when I said to folks, hey, listen, what you need to focus on is the breach of a certain level to go long and continue long and um, the failure of a certain level to go short. And in the meantime, what it is that I think, because we've held so much of this gap, that we are really going to continue upwards, right? now. Two things going on. Emotional candlesticks do retrace, so we are going to have a retracement. Gaps do not enjoy being open in SPY. That's a fact. What we have here is a double gap. We have a gap from this area, and we have a gap from this area. So it's going to get partially filled at the very least. The question is, 
when. So don't back up the truck here and go long because everything looks sunshiny and great to the north. There is going to be a pullback phase. Now, our question is, well, do we sit back the whole time while it's moving to the upside to wait for the pullback? No, but what it does mean is that we manage our positions on smaller time frames than we are accustomed to if indeed we want to participate in the upside momentum because the first thing we are going to want to pay attention to is a series of lower lows and lower highs showing up in the market that's telling us potentially we're going to have ourselves a failure of the gap. Now this morning we are drifting, but we are not drifting into anything significant. As a matter of fact, where we sit right now in SPY is the 15 minute high. We've come in to test that area and we are pretty stable right at that region. Okay, so let's just take a look at what that 15 minute high was yesterday. All right, we can see Okay, that's 9.30. All right. The 9.45 to 10 candle, actually, which is a little bit after the 15-minute high, which was here. We are sitting at, let's read this, uh, 145.63. What's this high? 145.39. So we're just above it. We're sitting right up above this ridge right here. So you can see that that's essentially a breakout space, right? So we've come right back in to test it. And for those of you that work with me, you know that is an S-curve event. And what we've done is flatten ourselves against it. And so we are at a decision zone. If we break below this wick, we've got shorting action. No doubt about it. That's 145.34. So if we break below it, there's a very high likelihood of shorting action. You want to move to a much smaller time frame, see higher lows and higher highs. If they return, if they fail to return, you have one candlestick down underneath your S curve, you know that you can short it into the next level of congestion. And that's what this is going to be. So we're here at a moment of truth. If we hold it, guess what? We've got more upside. Do not get into a space where you continually use other charts to tell you what the chart you're trading is going to do. That is a very, very bad habit. Now, there's nothing wrong as you, with using it as a gauge, but do not predispose or get in front of a trade unless the chart you are trading starts to show what it is that it needs to show. All right, so if it bounces off of this area, and starts giving us higher lows and higher highs off the 145.70, we know we've got more upside momentum that's going to take us into uh, 146.50 and 146, hmm, 147.49. Those are the two upshots. To the downside, we are looking at this 145. Mm. 145.30-ish, and then 145, 144.92, and then 144.75. Watch for the high-low range for there. Pay attention to what happens here with this VWAP as we come into the level, all right? We are in a space where there's a lot of good news, a lot of folks talking about trend reversals and that sort of thing. Now, I have surmised that upside momentum is what we've had for quite some time. This dip was a bit savage, so it did shake that notion in me just a little bit, but obviously we seem to have resumed quite well. Here's my suspicion. I suspect that we pop with all of this news, but we cannot sustain this kind of move. Why? There's this ominous set of gaps right here that we have failed to fill, and that is going to happen. All right, 
don't know when. We'll see what's going on with that, but most definitely it's going to happen. All right. Have yourselves a great day. Be careful trading. Pay attention. When something comes into a level, observe the behavior at that level before deciding what to do next, and that will help you be a better trader. Take care, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.